Closing statements, every broker shall ensure that their client gets a copy of the closing straight statements at the time of closing. I have to retain the closing statements for five years as the managing broker. All brokers shall attend a closing or one designated on my behalf. So you've carried the ball so far with your mom's listing. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and carry it across the finish line and go to the closing with her. If you can't go, I will go. I think you remember I talked about this just a week ago during this whole COVID-19. My broker couldn't make it. I actually had to go up to Greenwood and go to the closing because I am the one liable for that. He said, hey man, I can't go out. My wife, I don't feel good, yada, yada, yada. I said, Josh, you stay at home. I'll go to the closing because technically they're my clients anyway. Now, if you are representing an institutional client, such as a bank, they are not going to go to closing, so you don't have to go. Letter D says, if your client is not representing, then you don't have to personally represent either, which makes sense. If we're doing an escrow closing, meaning my half is at nine o'clock and your half is at three o'clock, your clients aren't gonna to come to mine. So if your client's not there, I don't want you at my closing either. Just like I won't be at your closing. All right. Number five, if I try to acquire property, I have to make my uh, license known. I have to disclose I'm licensed. Number six says, if I have an interest in the property when selling, I also have to make my interest known. Now the word here, did notice it didn't say ownership. It says an interest in the property. There was a court case where a buyer brought a father-in-law to buy property and the deal went south and it eventually came around and we're not gonna go through the whole court, but the crux of what I'm telling you is, they got the agent found in violation because he had an interest that he didn't disclose. It was his father-in-law and the court said that his father-in-law could have willed him the property. So in fact, he did have an interest when buying this property. He should have disclosed it was his father-in-law. All right. Now, I will tell you, this is one disclosure that does not hurt us. If you think or questioning, should I disclose this? Do it, all right? If you have to question, should I disclose it? Then do it. There's no harm in it. There is more harm in not than if you do. You cannot over disclose the fact that the client's your second cousin, all right? There's no harm in that. But if you fail to disclose it, it was your father-in-law, he got found in violation. Uh, here's the trust accounts. Cameron will talk a little bit more about them right now. Your trust account is subjected to investigation. I can have, when questioned by the attorney general, I would have to submit all of the details of my earnest money account. They call it a trust account or an escrow account, all right? If you engage in the activities of real estate involving money being held for another person, then I, in fact, must have a trust account that is held with a federally insured financial institution. I cannot put all the earnest money checks in a safe in my house and go, oh, that's my account. No, it's gotta be held in a federally insured financial institution, like a bank or a credit union are the two biggest examples. We've talked about number two, you must cooperate with any investigation. Lack of cooperation or failure to submit written response for pending in in investigations is in fact a violation as well. You are an independent contractor of me, as stated by the Indiana Administrative Code. Each managing broker shall keep at least one 
trust account, it must clearly be identified as a trust account and containing mo money of others. I cannot use the trust account to deposit any other funds upon that. What's that rule called? What's that violation called? Co-mingling. Exactly, bingo, we have a winner. You cannot co-mingle. That's what the violation you would be found of. If you mix another person or your personal money in with the earnest money, Cameron, that is called commingling. It can only be earnest money in that account. All right. Upon the death of the managing broker or the expiration or revocation of my license, the commission shall take over the custody of the trust account. Now, this speaks to the individual broker that's a sole proprietor. We'll go back and visit last class. Remember, if I die, my managing broker is the company or my LLC. So this section here also won't happen because they'll just get replaced with Ian. All right. So once again, that's another good reason to have this LLC or corporation or partnership in place so that when the one dies, the commission won't have to take over our trust account. Let's talk a little bit about your conviction. If you have a required to hold a certificate or a license to engage in your business, which we do, and you have been convicted of an offense, and here are the offenses that they really don't like. And we can read through all of these if you want. Possession of cocaine, methamphetamines, controlled substance, fraudulently obtaining one, manufacture of one, dealing of one, possession of paraphernalia, possession of marijuana, maintaining a common nuisance. You guys know what maintaining a common nuisance is? If you are caught at a place that has routinely been charged with a crime, but let's say you're not doing the crime, you still could be convicted of a common nuisance. Good example would be a house of ill repute. You know, somebody, the police break in and the guy's sitting in the front room. He's like, hey, I haven't slept with anybody. I'm not paying for sex. You are in a house that is known for that. That is maintaining a common nuisance. If you're hanging out in a drug house that has been convicted twice, but you don't have any drugs on you, they may still get you for a common nuisance. Uh, <clears throat> Offense relating to prescription drugs, conspiracy to commit any of those, attempting to commit any of those. If you've been arrested for a sex crime, any felony with the fitness to hold a professional licensing like embezzling or forgery, or any offense in another state in which the crime has similar punishments that, that ours. So if you were convicted in Florida of possession of cocaine, you may still have trouble getting your Indiana license. They can suspend your license for the conviction of the following. Dealing, 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 dealing. Sounds like you shouldn't be a dealer to me. Knowingly or intentionally manufacturing. Knowingly or intentionally manufacturing. Oops, I slipped up and made meth. How do you not knowingly manufacture drugs? My bad. Had some chili going, crushed some crackers, put it in the chili, meth popped out. Sorry. <laughs> 